Hey, what's up? Hey, Three guys. Uh, table. And a yeah. mess. And a mess. Guys and a mess, yeah. Bunch of water bottles around here. <laughs> I don't know. Kids running around the place. Yeah. I was playing in the background. Three guys and no hair. Anyway. Jeremy's got the most hair here. <laughs> That's weird. I just, <laughs> I, I keep it short, but we don't believe in it. That's yes, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Happy Wednesday, y'all. Yes. Thanks for joining. Happy, Happy belated Valentine's Day, if you didn't already hear that from us. We're so glad you guys are here. Mm -hmm. You guys having a good week? All 12 of you. Yeah. So Wife's birthday was yesterday, so yes. that was cool. Mm -hmm. She had an awesome day. Thanks for all the... We sang to her. Yes. Yeah, yesterday, we showed up for, for study, and all the guys sang we to her. We all sang so. to her. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. I missed that. Hopefully, I'll be back. Nah, well, hopefully, I won't be back next week because we'll still be in tournament. Following week. Tournament mode, Following yes. After basketball season. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Miss Patty, how are you? Hi, Patty. Hi. My wife is here. Hi, babe. Hey, hey. Good morning. Okay, that's for you. All right. And our other 10 so, followers. <laughs> we're gonna do we're going to do a little word association game today. Oh, I love no, it. Nothing <laughs> like... No, you're no diabetic comas and no, you know, no sugar overload for you. And, oh yeah, thanks. So and you're playing, all right? I am. Right. The, the hard part, is, I mean, it's like there's no points or anything, but I came up with the list, so like I've already kind of been thinking. But so I'm gonna throw out a word, and then I just want the first like word or thought that that comes to mind. All right, all right. All right. Like Sounds it. good. So if I say smell, mmm, odor. Yeah, my mind didn't go there. <laughs> Some sort of, uh, anyway, yeah. Bodily problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't really have one. Well, so that's weird because smell can be positive or negative. Mine was a negative right. thought. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, my bad. Uh, negative thought. <laughs> smelling salt. I just said odor in general, <laughs> you know. Rock. Jesus. Dwayne Johnson. Rock and roll is. There you ah. go. Of course, Peter, right? Yeah. So, yeah, my, yeah. yeah, that's true. Sun, S U N. Ah, Light. Awesome. <laughs> I love the sun. I can't wait for it to come back up. I love the beach, man. Today I am missing the sun, yeah, yes. for sure. Movie. Fun. In entertainment. Okay. It's kind of one of our things we do is yes. watch yeah. movies. Uh, I think pastime. Yeah. yeah. Uh, music. Inspiring. Spiritual. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> From the DJ. Can't yeah. Think. Actually, there are two well, DJs. I was gonna, I, yeah, the first one. Two I was DJs thinking, and a goofball. That's our new name. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Uh, livelihood. Um, I guess. Oh, there you go. Uh, fire. Hot. Uh, yeah, I went hot but since he said it already. How about cleansing? A cleaning agent. First word that came to mind was fun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you had fun with the bonfire. Oh, I absolutely did. I, I'm a pyromaniac. There's something yeah, peaceful about a fire. Even when it's hot out, it's like, man, I just want to yeah. look at it longer. Yeah. I love just, just watching. Oh, sorry. I was emulating my, <laughs> imitating it. And I, like, I love just sitting and watching a fire. Right? Big, small. Yeah. It is awesome. It is. <clears throat> Even a candle, like in your house, you're like, oh, that's cool. It's fire. Yeah. Let's look at it some more. Yeah. Yeah. Vegetable. Good. I like Broccoli. veggies, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> if you don't have a dad, you shouldn't be eating it, right? <laughs> Sorry, babe. we got a child in the room you can't see, so disgusting. <laughs> uh, flavor. Ah, vegetable. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Ain't wrong. I think it's salt. When you say flavor, I think, because I put salt on like everything. Okay. It's my... I, I thought taste. Again, Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav, uh -huh. Flav yeah. Did they have a big clock? Yeah. Oh, big clock. We'll, next week. we'll all bring our big necklaces next week. <laughs> yeah. Drink. I like water. I mean, I drink a ton of water. Tea. Coffee. Uh, church. Fun. Yeah, our church is so fun, y'all. I mean, we have <laughs> such a good time. We work hard, but it's fun. Yes. Oh, people was the first thing that came in my mind. First word that came to my mind was family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All around. I love them all. Yeah. Animal. My, we just said my, my dog Huxley. He's, <laughs> he's, he's so cool. Huxley's a cool little chew toy. Yes, he is. Something uh, caught between the teeth of a big dog. Dog came to my mind too because I have two at home. <laughs> uh, first word popped in my head was yum. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Never mind. Cow. For a wet market or something? <laughs> um, uh, horse. <laughs> Oh, I just ride, ride, ride. definitely. Cowboy. <laughs> Glue factory is. But anyway. Wow. What? <laughs> Glue factory. Glue factory. That's what they send them to when they're 
Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Old and anyway, uh, gotcha. uh, open. Close. Yeah, yeah close. Exactly. exactly. That's um, <laughs> giant. Dale. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what we got? <laughs> what did you think? I, I don't know. You thought Patrick did you? I know. I did. I did. <coughs> uh, baby. Cute. Adorable. I was waiting for them to say Dale again. <laughs> <laughs> baby giant. Baby done. Like, baby done. Thank goodness that yeah. stage in our life is over. Uh, glove. And OJ. <laughs> nice. I think baseball. Today is the yeah. official start of spring training. Is that Pitchers right? and catchers reported on most teams. So yeah, they, go yeah, ahead. Is that the game with the sticks and the, it the is. ball? Okay. It is. Um, <laughs> the one you have to hit in the air, not off the ground. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> not like cricket. <laughs> uh, it's still called a bat, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's a bat. bat. Yeah. Uh, shop. Ugh. Store. <laughs> <laughs> Hug. Hug. <laughs> Boring. Yeah. Um, For someone else. Three. Taylor and Hart. Ooh. What'd you say? Two. Two. <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't really have one for that. I don't know. It's... How'd you come up with that? How did you come up with these? Uh, most of them I just Google like word association words and ah. and then there's a randomizer. And you so can... I was gonna say if you had nothing, how could you pick the head? <laughs> I just, I was like, oh, that looks like cool. Now let's see what happens with, with three. <laughs> um, pizza. Oh, good. good. New hey, York. Dinner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm from Florida, so it's we're not known for pizza, so I I'll take your word for it. Yeah. If, if you do anything in life, go to New York, get a bagel and a slice of pizza. I, I, I did do pizza first. when I was up there. It is good. Yes. <laughs> the big slice is greasy as ever. Oh, best pizza in the world. <laughs> uh bed. Uh, sleep. sleep. Yeah, tired. Free. Me. Jesus. Like Jesus. I thought a bird. The old song, Free Bird. That's exactly what I thought Free Bird, yep. I see what you got. The DJs go there. <laughs> the hose. Water? That was kind of a boring answer. Garden. I could come up with some better. We could come up with better answers. These are boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought of fire. Fun. When you have a fire, you need the hose. Yeah. Yeah. All right, last one. Geese. A laying. Okay. <laughs> I thought a goose. That was better than water. The, the singular. <laughs> Dive bomb is what came to mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> they will yeah, there, there's a story behind that that we'll, hey, we'll get into. Hey, y'all, just for the record, since you said that, today we saw not one, <coughs> not two, but at least 30 turkeys in our yard today coming out of the woods. Yeah. They traveled right through our yard. There's a bunch of them down the road. There, like, did you get any of them? No. They're not fat. They're not fat <laughs> enough. So what? Turkeys. Oh, they're like this tall. They were huge oh, you, turkeys. You have bigger ones than the ones I see over on my side. You could have hit them with a shovel if there's that many. <laughs> I'm not sure the rules in Sugar Mill Woods about that, but we also want to be the friendly neighbors. <laughs> yes. And have a bunch Still, of, man. Like a crime scene in my front yard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, dang turkey. We could have a big turkey dinner. Yeah, <laughs> that's Thanksgiving dinner right there. You know, my dog's barking at him a little hard, and they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Like, oh, a snack. <laughs> well, they could eat him. <laughs> anyway, so that was it. That was sidetrack, sorry. No, that's, a, that's <laughs> I have a yeah. to that. Stories are the best part. But, yeah, we'll get into that geese dive bombing story another another day. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's it. A little word association, a little fun, a little, little icebreaker. Um, How many more weeks is Wednesday? One more, right? Yes. One more week Wednesday, and then the following week we are on Tuesdays at 5 30, correct? 530. 530. Yes. 530. Well, new yeah. bat time, we new bat channel. Are moving. Yes. Woohoo! It's gonna be fun, yeah. And there's only one more week. That's actually apropos because we only have one more week of the sermon series. He said apropos, right? Apropos, yeah, yeah he used the big right? word. Yeah. That's the big word of the, the day. The baby giant. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And I'm looking forward to you wrapping this thing up. We've been 17 sermons on this. Yeah. Like 19 weeks, right? Because we had a yeah. couple breakfasts in there. It's been a yeah, long time. Awful, yeah, we have, we'll have to go back and look and see. We started this a long time ago. Yeah, October, right? Yeah, we started this in a different <laughs> county in a different building. Maybe. Yeah. We did. yeah. Didn't we start up in, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We've been doing this a long time, but this Excuse has me. been so fun Bless to look you. at a sermon that Jesus brought to a time when I think culture was mixed up. People were getting it wrong. I think they were, they had watered down a lot. I think you're going to go there on Sunday, watered down the, the message God had delivered to the Israelites years ago. Mm -hmm. 
And before you know, pride got involved, man got involved, disobedience got involved, washing things down, watering them down. And, and Jesus came on the scene and delivered, I think, at the perfect time. Well, we know Scripture says at just the right time, mm -hmm. right? So, yep. uh, yeah, the perfect time, the perfect people in the audience. And um, I think we're here today because of that message. And I think later on, as, the, as in Luke 24, he says right before he ascends into heaven, he opens the disciples' minds. Yes. And they're able to understand Scripture. And I think they probably remembered that sermon and all the challenges he yeah. threw out. So, yeah, it's been yeah. fun. You did. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, you, you closing this out. You've done one of these. Yes. You've done a couple of these. Done, yeah, a couple, three out of them. It's been a lot of fun this sermon. Yeah. Surprise coming next. So, give you a teaser. I'll ask the question next Sunday. But if you had one night left on Earth, what would you do, and who would get your time? So anyway, mm -hmm. I'll ask. I'll re-ask that question in two weeks. Cool. So, before we get there, let's recap. Last week, did you guys ever have a tree that was significant to you in your in your world? One that grew, you grew up with, maybe it was the, the one you learned how to climb a tree on, one that over went over your driveway, one that just was prettier than any other tree you remember, one that uh, maybe is, is currently in your yard. Maybe there's a tree or two that you currently look at and you're like, God is only the author of that. I mean, I remember a tree when we first moved down here to Florida. Um, we had this tree that we, my brother and I would always climb, and we hunt a rope swing from it, mm -hmm. and we do things. And one year we had a friend climb up it. He was almost 30 feet in the air, and a limb snapped, and he came all the way down. Oh, yeah. Broke his ankle, but... That's a long day. Yeah, it, it made for interest, but we still climbed the tree anyways after that. Changes but. dinner plans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, New Yorker, you uh, got any trees, uh, even little plants? Maybe your mom had a plant yeah, in the we, kitchen or something? Or? We moved too much to have... Those trees. I mean, you know, we used to climb trees as a kid. I one remember fell out and broke my ankle. Um, but the, one of the farms I actually used to ride at, ride horses, um, was called Swing Tree Farm. Mm -hmm. So that one, you know, there's a, actually a swing in the tree. I don't know. It kind of a swing kind of stands farm. out. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, Cool. Yeah, I mean, growing up in the woods, <laughs> where yeah. I did, there was very little around, so trees were a part of life, and they were a part of fun. You mentioned uh, tree swings and yeah. stuff like that. We used to climb up a tree and, and, and tie a rope around mm -hmm. the base of it, above some limbs, and it would be super long, and you'd take an inner tube and wrap, tie the tree around it. We'd just swing around the tree and go back around, you know, like back and forth, and it was just really a lot of fun. I mean, we just did a lot of tree stuff when I was a kid. I mean, climbing trees, and if we had them in the, in the yard, and we just wanted to trim them up. My dad would send me up there as a little guy with a chainsaw, and I'd trim up trees and knock branches down. And but one in particular, right beside our house when I grew up, was, was a it was a really neat. Uh, you guys have seen them. They're called sycamore trees. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're really a pretty tree, and they have this bark that kind of falls off in different sections mm -hmm. and makes them really pretty at the base. But it was weird because sycamore trees do have a I don't know if you call it a fruit or what the the little ball that grows yeah. on them is. I guess you'd call it their fruit, but. You don't need them, by the way, obviously. But they're really hard, and when they, but they do fall when they, you know, when they, whatever, for whatever reason, fall happens, that, that they fall every yard. So they're like little hard balls okay. before they rot or turn soft, and then you can break them into pieces. But while they first fall, they're really super hard. So you, we used to throw them at each other when mm. I was a kid, because, well, that's always fun, right? Yep, boys, yeah. and boys do what boys do. But, <laughs> but I remember it was weird, because it, for the first couple years that I remember that tree, learning how to climb it, that, that is where I learned how to climb. And sycamores have really neat long limbs, and you can climb really high in these trees. They're really strong, even at the at the top. But those those little balls, or if, you, if you're online, you know what those are called. Let me know. But they they don't they didn't come out every year. Like every fall, it didn't happen. Like they didn't every single year have that uh, situation. But I just remember that tree because it was right outside of one of the bedroom windows of our, we had a two-story house that we built, and you could almost jump to it. And I often thought, man, if I could just jump from this window, but I was wiser than that, so <laughs> anyway, I'm still alive. But that was a fun tree to climb. It was really pretty. I love the look of a sycamore yeah. tree, but uh, today, man, I don't know about you guys, I love to hear a palm tree go. I love to look and see a palm tree, yeah. and when the wind blows, it's, there, it just, yeah, it's, it's, really, cool. it's really neat. And We got a bunch of people. Um, Miss Patty had a willow tree on her farm. Okay. okay. Uh, where where was that, Miss Patty? Which, where's willow trees? Where was that? Willow tree, I mean, it was up north. We had them up. Yeah. I mean, I don't know okay. where she, but um, Nathan yeah. said he loved the tree you yeah, were talking we, about. We that tree. Okay. Uh, Renee said her favorite tree is a Christmas tree. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's, you're better than all of us. And... Uh, <laughs> 
my wife said uh, the area we lived in when we got married had white birch trees. Oh, those are okay. Nice. Those are, okay. are kind of cool. Yeah. I think the Florida state tree is a sandspur, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> anyway, no, it's I, do those. I do not like those. I do not like those. But we didn't know what they were when we first moved down here. Yes, those are. But they're in everything. They hurt. And yes. Anyway, and they kind of sting for days, don't they? Yeah. Like you pull it out, and you're like, man, it, it's small, but it, anyway. We're off <laughs> I ask that because Jesus said in this last section we, we talked about a tree, you'll know a tree by its fruit. What fruit it bears, and a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. So mm -hmm. think about that. Uh, neck, that was That's a harsh statement if you're ever considering yourself a good tree, and then all of a sudden you're like, why did I do that? Or why did mm -hmm. I think that? I'm, I'm a good tree, and I'm not trying to uh, have us self-diagnose if we're good trees <laughs> or bad trees, but really... Yeah. That is what he's saying. Yeah. What he's talking about, the heart of a good person does not bear this bad fruit. Mm -hmm. And likewise, the, the bad people just cannot bear the good fruit. So that is so important for us, I think, as a new church, is, is to remember when we're out and about, and we talk about this a lot, I know for sure when I'm out shopping or eating or <laughs> what driving, yeah. I represent you guys. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that, that I can hurt your testimonies by how poorly I act, by not bearing good fruit. And so... Yeah. Uh, and, and I know that you guys take that seriously the other way too, but it is so important for us, especially being new, to be a positive, tr good, tr a fruit-bearing tree in this community. Yeah. Um, and I think we will grow because of that. And maybe we'll have all the little uh, fruits drop on oh, the giant's as big as a tree. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, he is. So uh, he, he, right before that, he starts talking about bad uh, prophets. He says, watch out for false prophets, excuse me, they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward they are ferocious wolves. You know, I was a young young guy, and I remember there was a, I wouldn't hate to call it a church split, but there was a kind of a, well, I guess there was a split there at the church a I went bit, to, yeah. and then they went to a different place. And I don't know the dynamics of that. It wasn't my business. I was a little guy, but but I remember that not everybody was happy about it. It wasn't like we decided to go, we're a plant. I mean, we decided we're going to take what we're good at, what God made us good at, and take it somewhere else for the use of that area. This was not that same feel that they left. And I just got to thinking, how does that happen? And maybe you're sitting here watching and church, church, quote on church, has harmed you or you've got a bad taste in your mouth because you've seen uh, disagreements um, in church. And I say that because too often, I think, we, we're so hung up on getting people to our church. We have this false expectation of the people in the world that have these needs. We should have been pointing them to Jesus. Uh, because in every church, guys, we still have problems. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect. I mean, we still have the same issues we go through in life that non-church people do. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, hopefully we're figuring it out and we're desiring to get better and we're, we're bearing good fruit. But, you know, we're not perfect. And, and if church has ever let you guys down, feel free to share that. Uh, don't No names, obviously, but, um, man, I'm sorry because Jesus has died for his church. He calls it his bride. Yeah. And he expects us to be holy, and he expects us to, to, you know. So why I said that is because he talks about this thing called fr false prophets. Mm -hmm. And chances are, when well, we're under a tent, but you know, they don't knock on the door and say, hey, I'm the wolf. Um, mm -hmm. Can I come on in? I got some damage to cause here. Yeah. They usually come in, and maybe oftentimes, even with good intentions, and somewhere along the way, they, they stop reading this. Well, they stop getting around people, and then they start, the pride gets in, and we start looking to draw men to themselves yeah, as opposed yeah. to, to Jesus. So, any thoughts on that? I mean, have you seen that type of thing, or what, you just talk about that thought. I've seen, like, kind of similar to what you said, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the split of a church because of difference of opinions, and one might have been more prideful than the other, obviously, which caused the, the set to go astray mm -hmm. from the ones that stayed. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's rough. And along the way, there's always damaged people, isn't there? Yes. There's always somebody yeah. that's wounded, and it, it's just a shame. It's not that's not what Jesus died for. So. <clears throat> yeah, we were one of the churches that we went to. There, there was some things that happened, and it wasn't a it wasn't a church split, but uh, it was amazing in that situation how all these people claiming to be Christians forgot to love people. Mm. You know, and, and the, the people that got mad, the people that left, some of them had had real legitimate reasons, but it, they forgot the love. Yeah. You know, and so that was the thing that always 
I come back to is I love people, man. Yeah. No, no matter what they do, no matter who they are, what they look like, the color of the skin, the color of their hair, the, whatever, just love them. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and I think you touched on this a little bit on Sunday, and I was listening to something the other day um, about the, the false prophets, is they don't come out saying, hey, I'm, like you said, I'm the wolf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's truth there, or at least part of it. Sure. I mean, even yeah. even Satan in the garden, there, there was a little bit of truth to what he was yeah. saying. Sure. Yeah, he just and, and it didn't, a little bit. Yeah. And I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. It wasn't just like all of a sudden, boom, he popped yeah. up and hey, it was, there had to be some kind of relationship there. There had to be some kind of, I mean, I would assume so, some kind of getting to know you and, sure. and a reason that they have that voice in people's lives because it starts with a little bit of truth. Yeah. yeah. And even a little bit of positive influence or yeah. character even, if yes. you will, or even great words or even a sense of hope you know I, I listed a, a handful of uh, cult leaders of yes. our modern time that you know David Koresh and Jim Jones and those guys don't get followers by coming in and saying I'm a wolf follow yeah. me they mm -hmm. get they get followers because they deceived um, yeah. and, and tricked people and so that that's what Jesus is talking about being careful of is the false prophets because they come looking like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. I kind of liken it to a parasite or a, or a virus, if you will, we're in a pandemic yeah. where we have a virus, and the virus introduces itself to your body, to its cells by saying, hey, let me in, I'm just like you. I look just like you guys. Yeah. And then uh, when it's let in by its host or its body, if you will, there there you are in, in trouble. So anyway, has anybody figured out the sycamore tree fruit not yet? No, uh, nobody has commented on that. Uh, we'll uh, Miss uh, Patty did say she was from Ivy Land, PA, Pennsylvania. Oh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> okay. Um, Miss Becky uh, chimed in about the tree. She said, "My husband loves all trees as long as he can make something out of them." <laughs> and he's good That's at true. it. He's good at he it. He is good at it. He's very, <laughs> very uh, talented in that aspect. So, um, he talks about at the end of that passage how he says, "Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord," or basically says, "I'm a Christian." Mm -hmm. Okay, if you wanted to use today's yeah. lingo, not everyone who says, "I'm a Christ follower" will go to heaven. Ouch. Yeah. And he talks about how there's some people who uh, prophesied in his names and did miracles and healed, drove out demons and stuff. Mm. That's powerful. Those, those are things you think, okay, only Christ followers could do yeah, that yeah. stuff. And he's using strong language here uh, mm -hmm. for a reason. But he, but he says, away from me, I never knew you. I tell you what, talking man, about there? if that doesn't give you pause yeah, to exactly. think, yeah, wow, am, am I... Am I doing this the right way? Did I, right. whatever? I mean that. I don't know. I hear that and I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. All right, <laughs> not that it's a checklist, but you know, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> kind of that. Yeah. Am I right with God? Because yeah, that's. It's, it's kind of a motive check. I think of it yeah. for me. It's, it's yeah. like, okay, what is the reasoning behind? Because ironically, just a couple sections ago, he talked about. He called them hypocrites, but we know he was talking about Pharisees uh -huh. and teachers of law. How when they gave to people, they made it all about them. And they, oh, look how much I'm giving. And everybody come checking. They blow the trumpets, right? They were gloating. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then when they would pray or when they would fast, remember, they, they, just, they were drawing attention to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not long after, he's talking about not all the people who gave to the needy, who yeah. uh, fasted and, and prayed out loud to, you know, not all the people are going to enter the kingdom of heaven. So. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I, you're oh right. no, it's fine. They, they, like you said, they were they were gloating and being there, and then you know what we need to do is uh, something I learned actually way back in the vacation Bible school. I, and it's uh, always BBS. stuck with me. It was called uh, the joy method. You know, you got to love Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. I haven't heard that since. Yeah, like, you said joy. What were you talking about? And then I'm like, I oh, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. It was, but it always stuck with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for a reminder of that's like. 1982 type stuff. I like that. Hey, I was only a year then, so it wasn't 82. <laughs> My wife said it makes you do a self check. Check yourself before yeah, you wreck yourself. Yeah, you know, exactly. She's right. She's right. And but, you, you're talking about trees as well. And you know, like Jesus, he started with the, like Becky said, he liked to make things. He was a carpenter like Joseph at first, mm -hmm, and then he mm -hmm. ended up dying on a tree for yeah. us. Very, very rock. And then Rich likes to chop all those trees down and, and build stuff. <laughs> yes, so. he does. Um, I, I briefly touched on the, the correlation. There's several spaces in Scripture where there's warnings about this type of mm -hmm. thing. Um, in John chapter 10, Jesus talks about being the gate and the shepherd, and his sheep know his voice. And mm -hmm. then, um, the wolf only comes, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And 
but there's a neat correlation in Acts chapter 20 where Paul is uh, he's obviously ending the near of his life or at least getting close to the end of his life and he's saying goodbye to the church in Ephesus he obviously loved those guys and he meets the elders far away he, is, like, he doesn't want to go into there because it just they won't let him leave probably but, mm -hmm. and he, he's saying goodbye to the elders the, the leaders of that church the guys responsible for the church in Ephesus and he says watch out guys Watch out, and I'll kind of touch on what he says here because it sounds very similar to what Jesus said. And, and I really believe that Paul had a time with Jesus. We talked about Galatians 1 where he spends three years in Arabia, and that's it, he doesn't talk anymore about it. But then he comes back to the disciples, and he talks about how he learned a lot of stuff on his own, or not, excuse me, not from anybody else, not taught by humans. Mm -hmm. uh, that to me says he spent some time with Jesus. But anyway, in Acts chapter 20, uh, verse 28, I'm going to read this. He says, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Meaning, the Holy Spirit of God made them overseers. Gave them the job. They didn't earn it. There was no... Uh, I mean, they were probably faithful men. Obviously, the Holy Spirit's pretty wise about who he puts in charge of Jesus' church. But he says, Be shepherds of the church of God which he bought with his own blood. Do you think God takes that seriously? Mm -hmm. I hear a very serious God about watching out for his flock, his people, the ones he loves. Um, he says, I know in verse 29 that I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. When I hear that, I cannot help but think, why do we have 6,000 religions, if you will, in our world today? Uh, why do we have all these different names and different sects of church? When I, I hear Jesus died for one, yeah. Um, what do you think about that when you hear these words? When you talk about that the wolves getting in and destroying, it makes me think of the old thing because my grandfather had a farm, like a fox getting in a hen house. It's just a mess, you know, mm -hmm. and it causes chaos. Yeah. So it's, it's and sometimes you don't see them; they sneak in. Yeah. And yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. It's a harsh, uh, you know, everybody in the world, right, in any company you go to, any place you work, their goal is to build yourself to the top, get to the top, right? You, whether it's through merit or people you know or all these different, whose kids you are, the goal is to get to the top and everything. Man, in the church, it's almost flipped upside down. The elder, the shepherd of the church is there to hold the church up, to serve the church, to train and equip. And when Jesus talked in John 10 about him being the good shepherd, lays in the gate to protect his sheep. That's not a job that everybody's signing up for, right? The, the hired hand, he says in that, runs when the wolves come, right? Because they're not his sheep. But Jesus, that's his sheep. We're his sheep, and he takes a, He loves us, and he protects us with his life in the gate. So he asks us, elders of a church, to emulate that. That's, that's to me, as, a, uh, as an important very serious role and so I think churches if you will if they've let you down if they've, if they've wounded you it's because I think their leadership forgot how to put Jesus first mm -hmm. and were drawing men to themselves I don't know about in every case I, I don't I'm not classifying all churches <laughs> together but oftentimes I see that there's pride involved yeah, men forgot right. to serve instead yeah. of wanting to be served and anyway this has been a fun section I'll read 30 and then we'll get to the a closing arguments by my friends here. <laughs> but he says, even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw, draw away disciples after them. I, I think that's how uh, Jim Jones has happened, and mm -hmm. David Koresh, Koresh has happened, and the other guys, they distort the truth so that they can be built up and lifted right. up rather than pointing everything to, to God. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the master of that. He was the master of saying, I only say what the Father tells me. Right? I only do the will of my Father. This is basically God in flesh, and he still knows how to only humble himself to even to death on the cross. So thoughts on that, and then um, take it away, Dale. <laughs> it's, it's almost, sometimes it's a reality check. You mm -hmm. know, it's a tough pill to swallow to think about that happening. You know, in somewhere that like we find as a safe haven or family, as he put it, when we were talking about church early in the word association, you know, and then, you know, somebody could be switching gears because they're not focused on Jesus. Yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day, 
and a little different context, but when you were talking, it came to mind. Um, I think one of the things that these false prophets or whoever as you will, um, charisma is a word that comes to mind. They're all seem to be very charismatic. Yeah. They're, yeah. For some reason, people are attracted to them, and, and a lot of that is how they carry themselves. Saul was that person. Yeah. Saul was very charismatic. He had a mission. He was the best Jew there Pharisee could be. Pharisee. Right. Pharisee. Oh, yeah. He was. And and but he wasn't going anywhere. Um, he was headed down the wrong path. Um, mm -hmm. And he, after his conversion, he realized, wait a minute, I'm not what's important. I'm not the important person. Mm -hmm. um, and and he still made mistakes. He still, but but God took the same guy. Still charismatic. Still, but his focus was on Jesus and not himself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big one of the big distinctions is where's the focus? What are they? Yeah. Are they pointing out a building? Are they pointing out an organization? Are they are they putting themselves up on that pedestal? Or are they saying no? It's all about Jesus. Yeah. In 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 13, Paul goes through this list of things he went through on his missionary trips, right? He was stoned, he was beaten with rods, he was whipped, he was uh, shipwrecked, spent a day and a night at sea, all these things. He was in danger everywhere he went, rivers and land and ocean, and yet he didn't stop his mission. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, any one of those things might have been enough for one of us yeah. to say, oh, I'm out, I, I'm just going to go to my comfy little place and minister to my people at yep. yeah. Homosassa. This guy was sold out for that mission mm -hmm. um, and went through all that and still said, I'm, I'm going forward. So, you know, to your point, that's that's right. Saul became Paul because then he knew what my job really was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he has these letters to churches like Ephesians, like Corinthians twice because they didn't get it right, <laughs> like all these other churches, <laughs> means that this stuff already happened yeah. while Paul was still alive. Yeah. Heed the warning, and yet I still need to write you a letter. You know, I mean, yeah, right. obviously there's some timeline exactly. stuff here, but that stuff is now 2,000 years later. We're, I mean, uh, man, uh, church it has let you down. I, I get it. I'm sorry. It's yeah. it's not the way Jesus drew it up. It's not the what he warned us about. So, um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, take it seriously. It's, um, it's, it's we're Jesus' bride. He takes that pretty seriously when he calls you his bride. I, mm -hmm. I, I know you guys, and you would defend your brides to the death, yes. um, no matter what. Uh, Jesus yes. will do the same thing. So, cool. Yeah, man, and and, and then this week coming up, it's the last week of the series. Yep. We uh, preach. I'm excited. I, I get to do it. <laughs> yes. I, I, my number came up, so to speak, <laughs> and uh, I'm excited. It's one of those that uh, I'm looking forward to to getting into it and. and kind of looking back and saying, all right, this is all the stuff we've talked about, and then now going forward, what do we do from here? Um, you know, and, and, and not to give too much away, but the, the last part of the verse talks about how Jesus, or the passage, excuse me, talks about how Jesus preaches with authority as opposed to the scribes and the teachers, and, and I think that's kind of a, a shot, if you will, at the hypocrites, mm -hmm. at the, you know, and we just come out of this section, we'll be careful of the, the false prophets, mm -hmm. and and the false teachers and the false disciples and then he goes on to say well I Jesus talked with authority not like the scribes who like you said have been so it, it'll, it'll be hopefully a good good sermon um, God normally shows up when I when I preach and thank goodness for that because then you'd have to listen to me and that's all just nonsense but uh, yeah we're we're talking about um, how do you build your house how do you what does that look like where is the foundation like what is the foundation of what you're doing um, so I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up this Sunday. Uh, like I said, the last series, <laughs> the last sermon of the series. Uh, that one kind of backfired. Right. It did backfire. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get the lift I was hoping for. Um, and uh, that's 1030 this Sunday underneath our tent, which was still a lot of fun. I mean, I, I know we, we've been talking about as much fun as this is, but we're ready for what God has next. But we're still not getting too far ahead of I'm reminding myself to live in the moment, to, to stay. God has something here and now. You know, I, I'm one of those that I, I like to, to play five steps ahead. You know, I like to say, all right, this is what we're going to do, but enjoy this moment. Um, so yep. Sunday, 1030, under the tent. 
I honestly no idea what the weather is going to look like, but yeah. it's Florida. Wait five minutes. It'll, it'll change. change. <laughs> I first thinking cold and hot and hot and cold. Listen, we one of our sayings around here is embrace the tough times too. Yep. We didn't necessarily know yeah. God was going to really give us tough times. Yeah. Well, we really did, but it's looked totally different than we thought, but gotta, we still love Got to live for him in the moment. Mm -hmm. Be you know? careful how you pray and what you yeah. pray for. Don't <laughs> ever pray for patience. That's it. Um, but yeah, so it's, you know, if it's hot, wear a t-shirt if it's cold bring a sweatshirt i mean you know we're doing the best we can with with some of the other things fans and whatnot but i mean we're outside and and it's we're loving it it's still fun. um it is it is a lot of fun so 10 30 again we're still live on facebook and then that's posted later on to youtube and to instagram for anybody that's checking those out but we will be right here so please continue to share the videos like the videos invite people um we, we appreciate you guys helping get his message out there. Um, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, talked about it for a couple of weeks. We are moving, and not our church, because we just did that. We're <laughs> talking about our show, Three Guys, is moving. Uh, starting March 2nd, it's a Tuesday. We will be airing this live on Tuesday at 5.30, uh, starting the beginning of the month. Um, for a lot of reasons, hopefully, you know, our, our 12 viewers, maybe we'll get a couple more, maybe we lose some of yes. you guys, but please don't, don't go anywhere. Even if you don't catch it live, catch the, the re-air, the replay, um, and again, still send us those comments and those ideas. Uh, if you have ideas for things you'd like to talk about before we get into the, the serious stuff or games or silliness you'd like to see, um, hmm. if you'd like to come and take my spot for one day, Please, maybe you just want to visit the show. You'll probably do much better than I will, and then you can have the job, and I can stay behind the camera like I prefer to do. But um, anyway, so next we week, see these shirts if you're behind yeah, the camera. We won't see well, the cool you know, shirts. If you have any shirts like this that are fat guy sizes, send them my way. If you don't want to wear them anymore, <laughs> I would gladly wear them. So I gotta not not picking uh -oh. on your daughter, right? But your wife comes up to me on Sunday right before I get ready to do the welcome. And she says, so Savannah was wondering, she didn't want to ask you if you would wear a tutu on oh stage boy. to do the welcome, because it was Valentine's Day. Yeah. I said I absolutely would have thrown yes, on a tutu have. to do the welcome. But anyway, so okay. I don't know why I started that. I hadn't planned on sharing that, but I just thought <laughs> that it was That would funny. be my daughter. Did anybody uh, figure out what he asked about the sycamore bulbs? No, man? no one has, has bulb. commented. I'm just going to Google it. Nathan said it was a, they do have a specific, Special name, uh -huh. but didn't say what that name was. Cereal now. <coughs> yeah. um, Google cereal. later. Everything, even <laughs> what you're thinking. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the only other thing we got is youth group. Tonight yes. we had we had a big bonfire last week. Yep. We had a lot of fun. Had what twenty? We had about twenty ish. About twenty people here. So we will be here on campus on the property tonight at six thirty. Yep, six thirty. Um, come on in through the front gate. We'll have some some lights on, and Jeremy will be in a big yellow jumpsuit. No, no. Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not a tutu. No, no tutus. Uh, yeah, check out. Look not for tonight. Jeremy um, and the other people that are hanging out. That's from middle school and high school. Yes, right. Definitely. And then again, that is from now on until the foreseeable future. It'll be yeah. Wednesdays. Doors open about six fifteen. Start at six thirty, yeah. and we'll be hanging out, playing games, having some cool discussions and all that. Um, other than that, yeah, join us on Sunday. We look forward to seeing you guys. We are so glad you joined us today. Hey, you want to pray for us? No? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. Hey. My turn? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you got it. Right. Yeah. Father, thank you for this day, and <clears throat> thank you for laughter, and thank you for smiling, and I ask that you teach us to do it more. And I ask, God, that you will keep our eyes open for false prophets, starting with ourselves. God, let us be a spirit of humility wherever we walk. Let us listen more than we speak so that the, the enemy never has a foothold in our church god actually let me phrase that in your church we ask you to continue to grow it and you will actually uh use people like these three knuckleheads right here to uh further your kingdom but god soften our hearts to people uh, teach us to love more and be patient more uh, the, just the way your son showed the perfect example two thousand years ago it is in his mighty name we pray amen, amen. Hey guys. Out. Later. See ya.